Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel and in today's video we're going to have a chat about spironolactone for hair loss. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. If you're a returning visitor, welcome back and thank you for your support. Um, so let's dive in. Um, the reason I'm doing this video for spironolactone for hair loss is that it's an increasingly um, talked about treatment, um, although it's been there for some time. Um, and I wanted to kind of uh, dispel some myths and also uh, to discuss how it can help with hair loss, what types of hair loss are it suitable for, as well as the potential risks um, and side effects. Um, so spironolactone is, a, is actually a, a diuretic, it's a potassium sparing diuretic that is used for treating high blood pressure. Um, it's a drug that has been around for a very long time with a good safety record when used in the right people. Uh, what it does have is another side to it and actually in addition to kind of uh, being a water tablet so it increases urination um, um, and uh, it, it acts on the kidneys and that's how it uh, improves, um, it reduces blood pressure. Um, it also works to reduce androgen levels, it blocks them. Um, and so uh, that means uh, that it can um, uh, block things like progesterones and testosterones. And I've mentioned in a previous video, it's one of the reasons why it can be used in some forms of hormone related acne. Um, but it can also, this also can affect uh, DHT levels, which is where the hair loss comes in. Um, so as you may have seen from my videos on androgenetic alopecia, you know, which leads to male and female pattern hair loss, um, a part of that uh, can be due to the effect of androgens like DHT on the hair follicles, which causes miniaturization and eventually scarring and loss of hair. And so if you block the effect of the androgens, um, the idea is you can help with reducing hair loss um, and even hair regrowth in some instances. Um, so studies have shown that in cases where there's androgen causing, where, where there is androgen related hair loss, so androgenetic, um, it can help reduce and treat that form of hair loss in some people, which sounds great, right? Um, and the studies have shown that both as an oral medication, but also as a topical, um, so as a kind of as a solution or a foam, it can actually uh, be quite beneficial for the, in some people for this type of hair loss. Um, it is not licensed for this purpose, but it is used. And I'm going to do a video, I think, um, at some point on the difference between license, off-license, um, off-label, and all of those terms. But it is a, a drug that has been used um, um, successfully for treating some types of hair loss. Um, so sounds good, right? Well, what's the rub? Um, one is it doesn't work for everybody. So some people still won't respond. It certainly doesn't work for types of hair loss that aren't, don't have an androgen um, related component. Um, and to remember the thing with androgenetic hair loss, it's androgens are a cause, but also there's a genetic predisposition. And so it's not going to manage that side of things. It's also unlikely to work in things like effluvium hair loss, so due to stress or traction alopecia. Um, so really there is that context. And even in people with androgenetic hair loss, it may not work or it may work to varying degrees on them. Um, so that's one thing to be aware. And as with everything with hair loss, often multiple types of treatments um, are going to be needed, um, as I mentioned in my videos with male and female pattern hair loss. Um, that's the approach that you'll need to do, but this is certainly something that is worth thinking about. Uh, whilst it's generally safe and has been around for some time, especially for treating hair, blood pressure, there are some potential side effects. Um, so one of these is that it can um, increase potassium levels um, it, because it's a diuretic it can cause um, off, uh, more, more urination, that can lead to dehydration, it can lead to dizziness and generally not feeling well. If you are someone with uh, low blood pressure or generally if you're someone on other medications or you have uh, an existing um, medical problem um, or if you have uh, kidney problems, anything like that, you, you must always make sure that you speak to your doctor first um, and they will most likely do tests and 
there are many cases where they might say it's not safe for you to use. So that's one thing. The other is certainly if it's oral spironolactone, you should really have ba baseline normal set of bloods in terms of your, um, your, your kidney function and your urea and electrolytes just to make sure they're fine and these should be monitored. Um, so that's another and so should your blood pressure. Um, when using spironolactone already, um, it's usually a daily medication um, and it's, uh, it's something that, again, if you continue, to, you will need to continue to use it in the long term if you want to maintain the outcomes. Other side effects can include um, things like menstrual, so period irregularities, um, breast tenderness. Um, the other thing is spironolactone already anyway for hair loss. Um, it tends to, whilst it can, be, it, will, it can be effective in men, it tends to not be used because of the androgen blocking effects, the testosterone blocking, and that can cause uh, feminization and problems like that. So it tends to be um, reserved for women, although there are topical spironolactone, it tends to have a lower risk of these side effects. And so it, uh, studies have shown that it, um, it has fewer side of these side effects in men and women and so that tends to be again not as commonly used in men but it is you it is sometimes used especially in men who would like an androgen blocker but hesitant to use uh, finasteride or detasteride and i've left a previous a couple of videos on these so check them out if you want to know why that might be the case um, it also cannot be used in pregnant women, breastfeeding women, um, or, or uh, anyone trying to be. And so that's the other um, thing to keep that in mind. A, lo a long list of people who shouldn't use it. And then another list of people who, if they use it, need to be used more cautiously. And in any case, you should be under good medical mon good monitoring as well. Now, while spironolactone, even if it does work for you and you're one of the lucky people, um, it, there are, you know, if you use it, whether it's already or topically, um, it doesn't work straight away. Nothing works straight away for, for hair loss and hair growth. Um, normally, um, don't expect to see much within the first couple of months. You might even see increased uh, hair loss. Um, and then um, normally, if you are going to start to see signs, it's usually in the first three to six months. Um, and then maximum results tend to be at the 12 to 18 month mark. Um, and you will need to use your treatment consistently. You'll also need to use your treatment in the long term or something similar to it to maintain it. Otherwise, once you stop hair loss treatments, the results tend to go away or they slowly kind of, um, the rate at which they do, that just depends on the medication that you are on. Uh, but normally some form of maintenance is needed. Um, Spironolactone, like I mentioned, isn't usually for hair loss used by itself. Um, and it's often, whether you're taking spironolactone already or you're taking it topically, um, it, it's often combined with things like minoxidil. Um, and if you're using it topically, it can be compounded with something like minoxidil um, just to help boost your chances of success. Um, things like tretinoin can help increase penetration of both. Um, and so, and stuff like caffeine, melatonin can also um, boost these effects. So it's usually a multifactorial um, affair. Of course, you have to do the regular stuff, like stay healthy, eat a good balanced diet, try and reduce stress, all the things that tend to cause hair loss. Um, you want to just try and reduce uh, these and, and optimize yourself and boost your yourself um, for hair regrowth. Um, anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I will uh, leave a, a, um, an article that I wrote on spironolactone for hair regrowth and some on androgenetic uh, for hair loss as a hair loss treatment and some on androgenetic alopecia if you want to do a deeper dive. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below or if you want to share your experiences. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't already done so, please don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Until next time, stay beautiful.